Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Ascended Casual back again with a different video this time. So I recently picked up this game called Neo 2. I like to call it Nio, but you know, whatever. Everybody calls it Neo. Um, because I was honestly, I was just thinking about like, hey, I really want to play a ninja game where I could possibly create a character like the Shredder. I think that'd be pretty badass. And so I was looking around and I saw this game and I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know. 25 bucks it's on sale let's get it did not know that this was like a dark souls japanese game but you know here we are i already paid the money so i'm gonna play it and i am still pretty relatively new in this game i mean i'm not at the very beginning there's like multiple regions i'm already on the third region and the reason why i'm making this video is because i there's a this game is extremely in depth all right, you're going to have to do a bit of research uh, to make sure that you know all the things that you can do and make sure, because you're going to need as much help as you can get uh, in this game. It's pretty difficult. So of all the videos that I've watched to learn stuff and figure out how stuff things work, um, I've noticed a thing that has not really been talked on that well, or if at all, and so that's something as a new player um, I want to help you all with is pretty much this game throws a lot of equipment at you um, and it can get pretty overwhelming it can you know get to the point where you start questioning like okay you know like how do I know what I'm supposed to be keeping what I should sell um, what's gonna be useful later or what I should you know uh, disassemble and you know like get rid of because uh, it's just taking up space and so on and so forth and that's kind of what I want to help um, teach the newer players um, so you don't have to run into that same worry that I had with stuff so first and foremost if you're coming into this video late and you've already played it for a little bit it's not the worst thing in the world I wouldn't say oh you need to start your entire playthrough all the way over that's not at all um, necessary however this will be uh, useful information going forward to help you know kind of what you um, what you need so I'm gonna go ahead and back out of this and turn my volume down because all that is extremely loud and yeah okay so the first things first is um, mainly a lot of this pertains to you know um, blacksmith like what what you should sell disassemble upgrade and do with the vast majority of your stuff this is really where you're gonna be doing a lot of your stuff so first and foremost if you're a brand new player you do not get the blacksmith until you complete I think it's like the second main mission the um, a beast born of smoke and flames until you complete this mission, you won't have the blacksmith. So it's not super far in the game. You start here, and then I think this is like the very next thing that you unlock. Um, you might get these side missions first or whatever. I don't remember. But uh, it's it's very, very soon in the, the game. So until then, a lot of this stuff is not available to you. But once you do get the blacksmith... Um, it's going to change a lot. So first and foremost, when I come in, the first thing I do after a haul, in the very beginning, the first thing that you're probably going to do, especially before you even get the blacksmith, is um, go to your shrines and make offerings. The stuff that you get in the very beginning of the game really don't matter all that much, and it'd be useful to make the offerings and, you know, offer up, donate your equipment, um, just for a little bit of extra XP so you can level up. Uh, but when you do get that blacksmith, uh, the first thing I do after every single mission in the very beginning is I would disassemble um, everything that is white or yellow. If it's a white or yellow item, I would, sorry, I would not disassemble those. I disassemble all my purple and blues. And the reason for that is they provide better um, materials after you know uh, disassembling them so as you can see 
for my purple in the top right corner where it says wood. It has four in the purple. Purple represents um, unique. Uh, blue is rare. Yellow is uh, uncommon and white is common. So uh, from white to purple, it is the uh, rarity and the um, quality of the item that you have. That's not always guaranteed the, the case. Um, sometimes you might get white items that are of lower level that are better than purple items. But that's just a, a good rule of thumb and it also kind of dictates how many special effects. If you look at the special effects in the center of the screen, it shows four. But if I go down to blue, then it has um, three. And then yellow can also have three, sometimes it has two. And then white only has uh, two, two or one. So. Uh, that really gives you the idea of the quality. So the first thing I do is I uh, disassemble all of the equipment that are purple and blue until I get about, I would say 50-ish of each of those components. And the components that I'm referencing are, if I go up to Forge and go to Tools, these, all right? So if I have at least 50 highest quality of each wood, tamahagani, or whatever these are, uh, I want at least 50. That's a good number. You're not really gonna be touching these too, too much. So you don't need to OD like I did and get like 300 of these because you don't really use these too much, at least not where I'm at in the game. Uh, so don't dismantle or disassemble all of your stuff because you are going to need some cash and it's good to go ahead and sell the rest of this stuff that you're not using. So what do you know, what are the things to disassemble and what are the things to sell and not sell or disassemble? So if you look here in the special effects of this, there is at the bottom it says in yellow attack and it has those two orange boxes with the arrow in between. You do not want to sell or disassemble almost any of these items. And the reason why is because these are identified by the community as inheritables. Meaning, if I were to soul match um, some equipment onto another equipment, um, I would get that effect. That effect would transfer over to my new item. Uh, so. Let's go ahead and, and show you. So let's see if I have one that will do it. No, not on this. Uh, I'll just pretend this. Okay, so you can see on the right, on the in the center, this is the item that I currently have, the Kuni Tomo rifle. Um, and at the bottom, the inheritable is movement speed. But if I were to soul match with the Kunimoto rifle above it, that over on the finish form on the far right has now changed to rifle. Inheritables will always override other inheritables. Um, but if your item does not have any inheritables on it itself, then it'll just pick it up. I don't think I have a, a good example of what that will look like. Uh, but if your item does not already have one of those and you soul match with an item that does have an inheritable, um, it'll, it'll pick up that inher inheritable. So, and the reason why you don't want to sell these is because you might get an, a weapon or an item later in the game that's like nigh perfect and you're going to want that inheritable on it. But if you just go ahead willy-nilly sell everything, then you're going to have to wait until the RNG grants you another item of that um, inheritable status. And then you're going to have to train it up and, uh, what's it called, get its familiar familiarity all the way up. And that's another thing. So the only way that you can get inheritables on another item is if that inheritable the item that has the inheritable that you want 
has max familiarity. So if you see right underneath the name of Kunimoto Rifle, familiarity 300 out of 300. That is the reason why this allowed uh, the inheritable transfer over. So the item that you have that you want the effect on does not need um, max familiarity, but the item that you want the inherit uh, uh, inheritable from needs max familiarity. So not all of these effects are created equal. Some of these um, slightly do the same thing. Um, for instance, there's like uh, damage bonus enemies defeated and then damage bonus familiarity. From what I've researched, damage bonus enemies defeated is garbage and familiarity is good. So if you want to sell those, great, no problem, but I would hang on to the damage bonus familiarities. Then there's also melee damage, and then there's melee attack key consumption. Um, those do completely separate things. There's active skill damage. Um, there's high attack damage, low attack damage. I always prefer the ones that are more overall encompassing. So you can hold on to them, or you can sell them, but I would not sell the ones that are like the overall encompassing, like the melee damage I would keep versus a low attack, high attack, um, strong attack, quick attack uh, damage buffs uh, because this obviously covers all of the, um, the damage types when, when it comes to melee damage. So that is, I'm going to leave that up to you if you have like a particular play style that you really like and you know you're always using a certain stance. Uh, for whatever reason, then you know you might want to consider keeping it. But uh, other than that, I don't typically like to um, have things specific to one specific stance or attack type or, or anything like that. So uh, that's important. And very, very rare finds, things that are extremely useful are attack, overall attack, you know, plus whatever number. Those are great. Make sure you do not sell those. So, okay, now you know, hey, what to sell and what not to sell, uh, what to hold on to. What about overall, like, equipment keeping and, and getting rid of um, in general? So, a lot of how you are going to be progress progressing your items will be the soul match feature. So you might just get an item that's the exact same as the item that you like, or it's a different item that's better than what you have, in which case I would just swap to it. However, here's the general rule that I have found when it comes to items. When it comes to armor, I would try and stay away from purple armor. And the reason being is because if you try to upgrade purple on purple, it is extremely expensive. Like, I mean, look at that. Soul matching costs 85 grand. Ridiculous. Um, however, if you were to try and soul match a blue onto a purple, it is drastically different. So, keep in mind, when you are doing these, I prefer to stay away from using purple items uh, or making those my main items. I would prefer to keep a blue item and soul match it and upgrade it onto a purple item because it's, it's actually cheaper. So for some reason, the game actually quantifies that if you are using a drastically better quality item to improve a lower quality item, then it's a lot cheaper. So I know these aren't the best examples. Uh, but let's let's show this as an example. I got a 45 blue item, and if I were to use a purple, it would be 71. But if I go to my 44 to 60, it'd be only 75, and that's a whole level difference. Um, yet it's still relative in cost. It's a lot cheaper to upgrade a white item onto a purple and a blue onto a, a purple and a yellow onto a purple uh, because you can't go down. You can't take, for instance, this level eight purple weapon. If I were to try and upgrade it with my level 44 yellow item, it won't upgrade the level 
because it's a, a, of a lower quality. Same thing with blue. So that's the reason why I stay away from purple items, mainly because you can't upgrade them because if you were, the only thing that you could use is another purple item, which I've shown you is just ridiculously expensive. So when you're upgrading for everything but purple, you upgrade up and I would suggest on to a purple or better. And if you were, let's just to say, hey, the purple is just an amazing item. You really want to use it. That's cool. But the way that you're going to be upgrading that item is pretty much going to be um, just waiting until you get a better item. That is that is pretty much how. You're not going to be upgrading it. You're, the second you get a better item, uh, you're going to be, otherwise you're just going to be stuck with that item. Now, when it comes to weapons, weapons can be a little bit different because at least as far as I am in the game, armor does not seem to come with inheritables. Uh, that might just be because of where I am in the game, but there aren't any inheritables on armor in the first place. So um, it's not really relevant for armors. However, with weapons, you do have inheritables. And the reason why that's important is because with purple items, you can soul match downward. So, for instance, let's say I have this purple weapon and I really want to get an inheritable on this. I can soul match downward for an extremely cheaper cost um, and get that inheritable, which is good. Um, otherwise, it, it follows the same rules of armor. You so so match up so the reason why I'm using this borehole bow over this higher level one uh, even though the attack is a little bit higher is because the special effects damage bonus familiarity on the 58 level one is going to when I do get my familiarity up it's going to put it way above and beyond uh, this um, higher level version Plus, it has the inheritable life drain bullseye effect that I just recently put on it. So, it's overall going to be a better weapon. And I'm pretty much going to be stuck with this weapon until I just, the game decides to give me a better bow. And in which case, I'll take that bow and then I'll soul match onto this. And that's the biggest reason why I can't get this inheritable is because my familiarity with this is, is not completely full. Uh, like I explained earlier. Uh, otherwise, I should be able to um, get that life drain bullseye effect on this higher one. Um, so, the other thing about these is with weapons, and I haven't seen any like ranged weapons that have this, but with your melee weapons, you can get what's called... Um, cursed weapons or corrupt weapons. I like to call them corrupt because it's more accurate to what the effect is. Uh, and that is effects that allow you to imbue corruption. Uh, they're also known as yokai weapons. And the reason why these are so good is because you can soul match them with not only other items, but also your yokai spirits. So that is the way that I got this attack bonus on my gauntlets is from a yokai. And it's super cheap um, every time you, you do this. So when it comes to your melee weapons, it is perfectly fine to have a purple weapon um, that is a yokai weapon or imbues corruption uh, to just main that because you'll be able to upgrade it using the soul cores, which are extremely cheap and will give you unique buffs. Uh, though I would be cautious, again, because I really like my attack plus four thing on this. So let's say this Maelstrom Oni B Soul Core were of a higher level and it would actually, in fact, um, increase the level of my weapon. I don't want to get rid of that effect of item drop rate for item drop rate versus human. I don't, I don't care about that. So uh, you will be probably stuck with it a little bit later, but as you progress through the story, you're going to be fighting stronger and stronger. Um, yokai which will give you stronger and stronger souls and 
and uh, and so on and so forth. And you can also get you know mortal souls that will just allow you to buff it up, uh, assuming that the color of it matches. Uh, I think you can only use reds. I could be wrong on that. Uh, red soul cores, uh, but. This is only relevant for weapons, melee weapons that imbue corruptions. If you have any range, if it's later in the game, then cool. Uh, I haven't gotten that far where that stuff pops up. Uh, if it does, other than that, everything else follows the same rule as the armor, which is the reason why my uh, fists are yellow. Yellow because, hey, for some reason it had three as a yellow, and I was able to attach the an inheritable on it, a left drain strong attack. And when I want to upgrade it, I can just find my highest level purple weapon, obviously not the other one that I'm using, and uh, upgrade it for cheap. So that is what you how you want to manage your equipment. So trying to just going back over everything that I already mentioned. First and foremost, if you're in the very beginning of the game. You might not have the blacksmith yet. You need to finish this mission, uh, Beast Born of Flame. That's where you'll find the girl. And she'll be your blacksmith. And then in the very beginning, before you get the blacksmith, I would just donate your weapons because they're not that great and it's good for extra XP. Uh, sell all the weapons. Um, disassemble until you have about 50 of each component. And then after that, you're fine, at least for at least the stage of the game that I'm at. Um, sell the rest um, but real quick big big thing do not sell these things all right and the reason why I say that is because eventually you will get to a point in a game where you will un unlock the hidden tea house I don't remember at what stage of the game I'm pretty sure it's like the third region where I am at where you will unlock this guy and you'll be able to, to join a clan and one of the things that you can do is when you donate, when you come to your clan, you can donate and they ask for specific things that you could donate. So if you see on the right, it's asking for a donation of gourds and a donation of armor that is exotic or better. And the point behind this is, do you see how much money is in those rewards? You don't really get that much um that much money from selling your equipment outright however I had a bunch of gourds that I was just hanging on to because I just never sold these and it was like okay cool each gourd I donated I get 51 grand so I went from like a hundred thousand uh, gold to like 500,000 just because I had these extra gourds that they were asking for lying around and I was able to just sell them all because I, I never used them and I got a crap ton of money so I would just hang on to all these for as long as you possibly can. Move them into storage if you have to, if they start getting annoying. But what you don't want to do is sell these for like 300 gold and then the donation comes out and it's like, oh, we're asking for, you know, some Omaris. It doesn't matter the element type, just Omaris. You can have all these. I could get like 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500, 550, 600, 650, 600, 650, 650 grand if, let's say, a special reward for the donation of Omar, Amari Mori's um, came out or whatever, and I could just sell all of these. So these do not touch. Don't touch until you get to the hidden tea house and you join a clan and they're asking for those kind of things. Do not touch these. You will get so much better, uh, so much more money just donating them uh, in, in that sense. And now that I've looked on and seen, hey, donate armor of exotically better. Now for the next 10 hours, I am not going to touch any of my exotic armors. And I'm just going to hang on to them until I can donate them. Because you will get way more money this way than selling them. So that is my advice to you um, those are the main things of your equipment and items that you um, I would just not touch just leave them alone this is how you manage your your items and your equipment 
Um, when it comes to soul cores, um, I pretty much just store all the ones that I don't use um, in my storehouse. And then when I feel like getting around to it, I'll probably just um, soul match them onto each other. All the ones that I don't want, just uh, soul fuse them onto each other. If you go to the shrine and manage soul cores, you can fuse the souls. And I just fuse all the ones that I particularly don't care about onto each other. And then what I do is I immediately go in and then I just go to resting rites and just uh, and rest them so I can get the soul fragments so that I can get the um, the shifting points. And that is virtually all the things that I've noticed most people don't talk about uh, when it comes to beginner stuff in this game. So um, I know this game is pretty old. I doubt this video will probably get looked at. Uh, but, you know, just in case this did help you, um, you know, leave a comment and uh, let me know if you have any other questions. Like I said, I'm not super far in the game, but I'll try and help out where I can. So uh, thank you for your time. Have a nice day.